<laughs> okay. Here I am again for the third time. This is my third t attempt today to make this video. The first time I came out here earlier today, I didn't realize that I hadn't set my auto exposure to one of my cameras back to auto. It was set to manual. So one of the videos was completely blown out. The second time I came up here an hour or so later to try to do the video again, the one of the cameras was zoomed in slightly and the 3D would not work. Now I'm up here for the third time using the last bit of light of the day to make this video. Now it's been about a month since my first, since my last live action video and I know I already kind of did a subscriber or not a subscriber, uh, a channel update video. But this one is, it's like a two-parter with like an epilogue or whatever. Uh, the second part is gonna be about this right here. Uh, but the first thing I wanted to say is I have, I wanna thank all of my subscribers. I have 59 and I started this channel over two years ago and I, I don't really know what I expected, but I just want to thank all of the sub people that have subscribed. Now, I know that I post these videos to a lot of different places once they're uploaded to YouTube, uh, 3D, Reddits, which I'll have the link for those in the description below, and Facebook, and Telegram, and Discord. I don't know if anyone there ever really ends up watching these videos, but if you do watch these videos when I post them, if I'm not, I won't even ask you to subscribe. If you would just go ahead and like the video, because it really does help it out and help YouTube realize that it's something that people want to see. If you want to subscribe, that's cool too. I'm not here to beg for subscribers or attention, and I'm not here to blame the algorithm. Uh, one part of the algorithm is having a regular upload schedule, which I clearly do not. I also really don't focus on one thing, uh, outside of the 3D aspect, which isn't really that popular anymore, if I had this channel back in like 2010, 2011, 2012, it probably would have been pretty big. But in 2020, 3D isn't as big as it used to be. It's still pretty decently big in some countries. 3D Blu-rays are still released overseas, but here in the United States, it's pretty much all but dead, unfortunately. I know that there are still pockets and movies coming out in 3D, or they would be if, you know, the worldwide event would allow them to. But, I mean, I don't know. I, I think it's, I think it's a thing of, we're gonna continue to have 3D content as long as people are willing to make it. 3D is much easier than, okay, I know I'm going off on a tangent. Um, the point is, if you watch this on another website or another platform that isn't YouTube, go ahead and like the video. Don't have to subscribe, don't have to comment. Uh, but if you do regularly watch my videos, you might as well head, go ahead and subscribe because that does help the channel out. Now, on to the meat and potatoes of this video, which is about the building behind me. This is the, I wanna say right, Baxter Peterson. Center for the Arts. I think that's it. Online, it's this Chesterfield Center for the Arts, but there's a sign over there that says Baxter Peterson, I think. I walked past it, and I walked past it like six times today, or five, actually, and I don't remember, but the point is is that when I first moved here, all this area was was a little patch of grass, a little bit of land out in front of the the library which is right over there and I I was thinking to myself you know how were they gonna fit all this and that little patch of grass there really isn't that much room uh, well they, they ended up actually commandeering a good chunk of what used to be the library's parking lot the parking lot is now that way direction and 
that's how they were able to fit it there. I, I couldn't believe it. But the really exciting thing is that it's going to be a general arts center, but it's also going to be a playhouse, uh, which is, you know, the theaters like in that area, I guess. I haven't been inside, but it looks like they're nearing completion. If you see here, they actually have it so that you can see over the fence. Otherwise, it's uh, this black, tarpy, clothy stuff all around the perimeter. I'm, not, I'm trying not to get too close because of the interaxial. Anyway, so they started working on this last year, and they've been continuously working on it. Uh, through all the hardships that this year has brought and it's come along quite nicely. I think it is still set to open towards the end of this year We shall see but if it does I will be up here with the 3d cameras and everything and hopefully get to Do a 3d tour of it when it opens up who knows you know it is a center for the arts I don't really know if people even consider making 3d videos or materials art, but you know, when it's done right, it, it, it's pretty amazing. But yeah. Center for the Arts. Super neat. Um, I thought, I mean, like I said, the sign had been there for a very long time. I, it, it was pretty much caught in financial limbo. They just couldn't get it funded. In, and I think someone, and someone might have been the Baxter person, gave it a whole bunch of money and it was enough to go ahead and complete the funding on it. Very exciting. Anyway, the, I guess the last part is the, uh, the big thing, well, one, I, I'm getting How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, which I think I already said in my last video. And, and that should be, well, it says that the, uh, the estimated delivery date is August 24th to like September 9th and I haven't gotten the tracking number for that yet. I, I have to go, I, I'm seeing this through Amazon but I think I have to go through another person to get it. So that should be coming at some point in the next few weeks. But the, the large thing that I ordered at the beginning of the month, uh, I have the ability to get it soon but it needs a part that I, I don't think is a super important part, but it would. I, I feel like it's probably best to wait for that part to come in so the person that's sending it to me can send it all together and I won't have to worry about it not doing stuff right. Anyway, I know I haven't talked about that, but it, it's gonna be really cool when it comes in. I still have to get one more thing for it and that, that's gonna be another couple hundred dollar Renos, but hopefully it'll be worth it. Uh, I, I definitely want to increase the quality of videos on my channel. The issues that I'm having with what I have now, I, I love this rig, it, it is, it has done a lot for me, and I, I can't appreciate it enough. Uh, to be able to make my own 3D videos is truly next level stuff. It's something that I'd always wanted to do, and while I have 3ds Max, I'm limited by my 3D modeling abilities and patience. Oh, with this, I can just set up and point. However, there's a few issues. One, it is a homemade rig, and as wonderfully built as it is, it is not perfect. Uh, there are a few idiosyncrasies, I guess, in the designing of it. Um, I'm not hating on it at all, don't get me wrong, but it does cause the videos to not be 100%. It's close enough, and the auto fix on my computer, uh, or the auto fix on my editing program pretty much fixes and solves a lot of those issues, but there are some issues that that just can't fix, and also I lose some of the quality because the uh, it zooms in on the video a little bit, it's not such a big detriment, but it is something. The other issue is that I can only get the inner axial, but so close that right now the cameras are slightly wider than the human inner ocular, which is two and a half inches. So all the 3D is gonna 
be hyper stereo, even if it's just a tiny bit. I, I have done really good, I, I think, over the last few years to really maximize and what, what's the word? I've really maximized the amount of quality that I can bring out of this rig. And if I want to get better quality cameras, they're going to start getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Especially once you get to the 4K cameras. The 4K Sony Handycams are very meaty. They are thick boy cameras. So that would just increase the interaxial more and more. And that is a problem. So these are issues that I have to fix. I have to make the videos more, the quality more consistent. And I have to fix the interaxial. Because if I, if I want to do like close up stuff, I can't really do that with these cameras because, like I said, interaxial, interaxial is too big. Uh, for stuff farther away like this, or if I'm standing in front of the camera right here, that's fine. But close-ups, not so much. It, it's very exaggerated and, and under. But I, I suppose that's it. Uh, don't forget to hit up my Discord in the description. That'll be there too, along with the 3D subreddits. And it, like I said, if you're watching this on one of those subreddits or on Discord or Telegram or Facebook, if you do actually watch these videos, then please go ahead and, you know, like, subscribe, do, do whatever you gotta do. I, I'm not begging, I swear, I promise, I'm not begging. But that is, that is it. I'm gonna pack things up. The uh, light is pretty much gone and 3D generally needs a lot of light. So yeah, I'm out.